Hello, everybody. Episode eight. Producer Mike, can you believe it's episode eight? Eight is my favorite number, Davis. This is a this is a big one. This this is exciting for me today. First of all, I, I didn't put it on yet because I wanted to save this moment, but it's it's going on. So I'm going to do the slow hat okay. on. Ready? Reveal. Hey. Oh my god. A PPL. Oh my god. How do I, I get like my those? hair? But I like this a lot better. <laughs> Looks good. Guys, we are we are we are joined today on episode eight with three guests, two guests that have been here before. They're incredible. They're the most important two people for the PPL. We got Marcos Del Pilar and Keith Stein. I want to hear that applause. If you have that applause, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> right. So th th this is an important day because we're we're joined by a third guest, but I really want Marcos. To count down, first of all, Marcos, you're going to do what we do. We do this to you every time on this podcast. I was ready. I was I'm ready. I'm going to count that. down one, two, three, and you're going to do what you do. And then I want you to introduce our incredible guest today. You ready for this? One, yeah. two, three. Vamos! Go PPL. Awesome, Go PPL. awesome, awesome. Marcos, you you do the honors of of uh, introducing our incredible guest today. Yeah, well, I, I I don't have probably words enough to say thank you, you know, to Chris Iso. You know, this person, this he's an incredible human being first, you know, someone that I can consider a good friend, you know, part of my family, you know, but not only because of his human quality, the reason that um, we are inviting him today is because obviously he's the owner of the LA Beat team, you know, the team in LA for the PPL. And uh, something that I want to recognize, you know, in front of everybody is that, uh, he was the very first person that believed in us, that believed in the property league. He was the first person to buy in. He was the first team committed. And we couldn't be here today if that wasn't, you know, because of him. So I, I want to say thank you. I, I, I think I did it so many times, Chris, but I, I want to I wanna say thank you in front of everybody because we couldn't be here without you. So thank you very much for believing in Padel, for believing in us, for believing in, in the PPL and for everything that you are doing. I think we'll be covering, you know, everything he's doing for us. But uh, I, first of all, I want to say a big, big thank you in front of anything else. I want to also thank you. So We thank you all the time. But Marcos, I'm also remembering one of the first calls we had with Chris. And he said, I want to be the first team because I see this thing exploding. You wait, guys. He said, once I buy a team, and then once somebody else buys a team, then it's gonna the floodgates will and, open. And I and I heard that he wanted to buy Alaska, but it wasn't available, so he decided <laughs> no. to go with LA. Is this true, Chris? No, I, I one of the first thing I said, uh, it was another uh, team that was interested in LA, or they said that they want LA, but they were not ready to buy. So I just called Marcus, said, "I will buy. I will buy the first team. We our company, but." It has to be LA, or I'm not doing it. So Marcus made it happen. So and Keith made it happen for me. I'm very happy. I'm very proud, and I think it, that for me, it's it was one of the key things to when we are doing PPL that I want to have LA. I'm actually moving to LA, uh, so that's why. So and Chris, where are you? You're from Spain uh, originally, and you live in Spain currently, right? So where in Spain are you? I'm not originally from Spain. Oh. If you, you no, you. My mother is Armenian. My dad is half Russian, half Assyrian. I was born in Iran. I grew up in Sweden. Married a half <laughs> Greek, half Swedish woman. Moved to Spain, and now I'm moving. I speak six languages, so that's pretty good. Uh, not yeah, bad. So, not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Keith, so Keith this, do you this, speak how many languages, Keith? One. Well, I speak, I speak, I speak Japanese and a little French, so and barely English, barely English. <laughs> Chris, so you, so you, so you're living in Spain currently. You're, you're, you're yeah, gonna. In this and... is actually where my love of paddle started, yeah. and uh, at the same time, I'm a, I'm a business guy, so I, I do startups. I have different businesses here, uh, and one of them was like one of my friends just told me. Uh, Chris, 2018, Powell will be big. Uh, I'm gonna buy a couple of courts, and I said I I'm not interested. No, I'm gonna. It will be a hundred court. And as soon as I heard hundred, 2018, then I said no, this is a business. And I mean, export, import, uh, logistic. I do the like this kind of business. So I said, and I go and visit all of the factories, which I did. So I went. I think visited may maybe 20 factories. 
and I start to buy courts and sell uh, through my contacts in uh, Scandinavia. Now we are selling in from South Africa to Europe. So then change focus to US. Did you get a good sense? I mean, at what point did you get a sense that this thing was going to blow up a little bit and that Padel was going to be what it's what it's becoming to be? But I, I saw uh, the thing is in in business. Uh, I, I've been my own business. I, I started my first business when I was twenty years old. I'm forty forty five today. So I'm always. I like to be early. I like to do stuff before anybody else. Uh, so three years ago, when I met Marcus for the first time, when I came to US, and I went and I talked to people, and at that time they were like, uh, sh like shutting the door. No, pick a ball, pick a uh, paddle would not work. Actually, that made me. Uh, that made me more like, yeah, this is what I want to do. When I get that, then I know I'm in the right place. Uh, so I went back, and at that time it was my idea was just to sell courts, nothing else. So I went back. Our our team we talked. We are six uh, at that time. We're six partners. So uh, we talked together. And we said we come up with the idea that yeah, let's uh, bring uh, make an investment company and invest in paddle clubs at the same time have a, have the have the paddle courts. Mm -hmm. So this is in in general, this is what we did. So today. We have both a sales courts company that the fact uh, manufactures in Mexico, highest quality court in the world. Uh, and I'm saying that with the respect to everybody else, I'm not saying, but I have bought from many people, many companies, and I chose them. So it's not my company right, that I'm right. promoting. I chose right. the best due to the logistic quality, uh, all of it in, in whole. So then we start to invest in uh, pilot clubs in the US. Then this opportunity presented itself with Marcos. And Marcos, from the day I met him, he knows. For me, uh, this is what I, I build business around the world. And I, I, what I'm good at is reading people. And directly, I said, this guy is my, he's my family. I'm going to, we're going to do business many, many years together. When he came up with this idea, you know, Marcos, I told you, this it will hit i promise you it will, i believe in this 100 percent. so we got uh, our board we hire uh, we we have a, a american ceo alan flat on board our investment company uh, amazing guy uh, many years of investment uh, banking uh, very competent so we brought him in and yeah he helped, he helped us with this investment with the other american investment so and and how many parts? So is there three partners uh, directly was uh, involved in the LA Beat? Yeah, LA, LA Beat is uh, owned by Swedish. Uh, LA Beat is owned by EE Capital, which are his investment company. EE Capital is owned by a Swedish AB, where we are right. the majority right. owners. I, right. I, I started this uh, 2018 by a phone call. So I said, okay, let's. That, that's how we started actually, and. Why I believe in that directly, I saw what happened in Sweden and everything that is, as a human being, we want to be good at stuff. And I saw that paddle is something that it's very, uh, it's easy to play, but very difficult to master. This is actually a quote from Alvaro, my friend. So I use that. I think it's a very good explanation. That's an incredible quote. That's an incredible quote. It's, yeah. Maybe, Davis, can I jump in for a second? Alvaro's yeah, it's Keith, go ahead, Keith. Chris, um, so much to unpack. Um, mm -hmm. What's the name of your manufacturing company that produces the courts? Sky Paddle. And they are actually the official court in France, Toulouse, for World Paddle Tour. They are, uh, I, I don't want to go into details, but by it, it's not just the court steel or the, the quality of the paint. It's about the logistic, how the packaging is. It, it's all, it's very complete uh, how they do. And that is one of the reasons that I chose the best. I believe that US, Canada, uh, you want the best uh, quality long-term. And I rather, when I'm investing stuff, I rather do it long-term because in the beginning, guys, everybody will play paddle because it's a new sport. But when this grows, when it gets bigger and bigger, then people will know because we will get a lot of experts in this sports very fast. And then people will start to say, the mash is sound, the, the turf is not right, the lead lights is not right. So I'm doing it right from the beginning and saying, this is the important part for the growth and long-term of the business. Uh, so- Chris, what, what is the 
the name of your group that opens the clubs? And how many how many courts or clubs do you have? We, we have uh, one investment. I, I can say two for now because I cannot talk about uh, it's about a uh, uh, paddle house in New York. We invested in that and growth of paddle house. Uh, we invested in Miami paddle X. We have currently five more locations that we are investing in closing. So approximately end of this year, we will have around 10, 12 clubs uh, in US. And the concept of what we are doing is not, I, I, I really don't mind. I just looking for good operators who can operate. And if I find their operation uh, good enough and Alan finds, our team finds that they are good enough in business plan. We cannot get, there is no business uh, 100% guys. There's no never a business that you check all of the boxes. 70% is good enough. If it's good enough, we fill in the rest and help and build the sport. So we are looking for the right people and growing every state. This is what we are doing. One more, quick, have... one more quick question. You have a bunch of Swedish NHL players. 14 You're... of them, yes. Okay, because uh, Davis is a big hockey guy, so is Mike. Yeah. So could you mention any of the hockey players who are partnering with you in your yeah. endeavor? Uh, William Carlson in uh, Vegas. Uh, we have uh, Elias Lindholm in, uh, I, I think he's in... Uh, uh, Vancouver. I, I'm not good at this, just so you know, guys. Yeah. Uh, but there are. There's a we test later, our... Chris. There's a test later. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't ask me about that. But uh, the the thing is, one of my closest friend uh, is managing them. So when we get, but when I got back to uh, Spain and I talked about, it, I said we need a couple of factors to here. We need a little bit big names. We need uh, American company. We need to be local. We need to have. Uh, local present, and then we will go. So we collected all of that. We are. Uh, we, I have a very good team with uh, from uh, accountant, bankers, uh, ET guys. Uh, so all of this we collected and we did it, and we brought in the hockey players as investors. And yeah, here we are. Chris, that a lot about seven eight years ago was at the uh, Rogers Cup in Toronto, the tennis event. And uh, I was having a conversation with who was already retired at the time that was there doing PR, Jonas Bjorkman. Yeah, and yeah. It was, Jonas it was the very it was the very first time I even heard the word pedal. And yeah, he said, okay. "Yeah." It's, it, he goes, "Davis, you don't understand this sport." And I go, "What sport? How do I not know? How do I not know the sport?" But now here we are, right? This is it's yeah. pretty incredible. One funny story is that when I came to U.S. first time, I went to I don't want to mention names, but I went to a te famous tennis club. And I talked to, I said, listen, this will be big. No, no, no. Paddle, this is, this is, uh, pickleball is biggest. You see that guy, he's the world champion in pickleball. Then with, as a joke, I told him, yeah, only you Americans can say somebody's world champion in something only you do. Uh, then he <laughs> laughed. <laughs> uh, then he laughed afterwards. He said, okay, you know what? You can put two courts here. I said, will it be open for the public? No, it will not. Only for my members. Then I told him, you know what? I rather wait. You will come and buy it from me. And the beautiful thing with that was, he said, you know what? I hope you're right. Yeah, yeah, Today, yeah. So it, it's a beautiful thing that he was like, uh, yeah. Still, I, I hope that you will get uh, get there. So, do you think? I mean, and this is a this is a great question, really, for the entire panel here, including even even Mike and I. So. Chris, in case you don't know, the kind of basic premise behind this podcast and me as host is at the beginning of this, I don't really know anything about Padel. And, oh. and what, what, it's, a, it's a great idea because you have a host who knows nothing about the subject matter, but I have my guests on who teach me about it. And mm -hmm. one of the, my favorite questions to ask is, you know, why hasn't Padel become as big as it might be in a year or two years, maybe it needed the PPL to have that happen. I know it's big in Miami and other parts, Houston and Texas and a few other places, but why do you think it's not, why do you think it's taken this long? Uh, the short answer for me is that when you, when you don't have Americans who put money in something and believe in something, it will not grow. That, that's one of the biggest reasons that I, when I went back and said, we will not sell courts if we don't put the money where our mouth is. We need to build clubs ourselves. We need to say, we dare to do this because we believe in this sport. Yeah. 
you, you, you have to know the, the dynamics of this business is the same everywhere. In the beginning, you have the you have the business people, the risk takers. So that's everywhere, it, even in Sweden. Then you have the difficulty to find the location because the people who owns the real estate, they don't know what this is. So they will say, no, I'm not renting this to you. What is Padel? Now I will give it to Amazon. So you have these challenges everywhere in the beginning. Then it's permitting. Then when this, this hurdle goes by and you start to make numbers, somebody takes the risk and you start to make numbers. Then suddenly who comes in? The investors come in, bankers comes in and say, mm -hmm. oh, this, this is an opportunity. And in two, three years, and this is, I, I guarantee you guys, then we would have real estate people coming to us and saying, you did a good job. I have a, I have a place for you to build the puzzle club. But this is the same. It's not just Sweden or uh, Germany or England. It's everywhere. The same. Yes, it's everywhere. It has the same, and and it will come a, a, a certain time where the opportunities, when the hits, this goes suddenly big boom. Then the uh, you need to be careful at that time, so you don't open in everywhere and too expensive leases because then the opportunity opportunities come, and that's the risk that I know. So I will see always. Long-term business, you need to have the numbers. You need to have very low calculation. You cannot say some people value their company to 8 million already without any court. And example, they say, yeah, uh, we're going to play 15 hours a day. Yeah, that's not realistic, my friend. In Miami, in outdoor, uh, you will mm -hmm. not have that 15 hours, 365 days. Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. the numbers are not correct. Then mm -hmm. we will not invest. Or we will teach them that this is the way you need to think. Yeah. location yeah. Uh, all of that whatever we know we bring to the table the know-how yeah. and the core and so marcos what do you that, that's a good question for you too i think that's important is like what why hasn't it I, I completely agree with Kristen that it's it's you need you need the investment in the u.s and you need the culture to change you need people in the u.s to really believe in it what do you feel marcos about the growth of padel and 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 why it hasn't been bigger in some parts of the U.S. yet. I, I agree with Chris 100%. You know, I think that uh, one of the main stoppers at the beginning was lack of exposure. You know, like we needed to do the job, you know, to to get people to get engaged with the sport. So that was the main one. Second one probably, you know, is validating the model for some people, some Americans that are not exposed to this. They, they were thinking like, okay, let me know how the business model works and so on. They needed to get some examples you know, where they can validate the model. And after that, obviously, is what Chris was saying, you know, um, infrastructure. So we got we to gotta get to build more and more facilities to expand, you know, the, the pool of fans and the pool of, you know, people involved in co coaches, you know, brands, blah, blah, blah. So I think he was totally right on that. Something that uh, I know that uh, everybody will get to know that Chris is a very successful entrepreneur, you know, a uh, He's, you know, very, very involved in Padel, you know, with a lot of success, you know, in Europe first, now coming to the U.S. and doing so many great things. But I, I would love our audience to to understand and to know who, who he really is, you know. Sorry if I'm changing topics and I'm, no, you know, it's all good. In a it's a podcast. Topic. That's what we do. We flip around. Uh, but I, I would love to I would love uh, to tell our audience, you know, how high quality human being he is. You know, his principles, his values, you know, is something that is out of charge. He's uh, a man and a, an incredible human being that is very leveraged, you know, on friendship, loyalty, uh, trust, you know, and this is something that I really admire on people. I don't have many icons in my life, you know, kind of uh, seeking celebrity, apart from you, yeah, <laughs> Davis. But I, I don't have any icons, you know, I don't follow any any big celebrities or whatever. I, I just got impacted by people and, and high quality values people. And Chris is, is that oh, kind of person. Wow. Um, so are you blushing under that tan? Are you blushing under that tan? <laughs> I got I got one question, which is probably yeah. fit, you know, uh, the opportunity for Chris to talk about himself. I know he's shy on this, but Chris, how you would love to be remembered? in the future let's say that one day some people will talk about chris isha what you yeah. would love people to tell about you we're I'm not planning tell, uh, chris we're not planning your death or anything just so no, you no, know no. This I'm, isn't gonna, like... I'm gonna tell one thing that i do uh, that it's important for me uh now when i'm coming to us is that any business i open 
one of the key things I do, I find people, I give them a part of my company when they work hard. The only thing I expect back that they do the same thing for somebody else. So what I did for them, I want them to find people to grow. Uh, uh, what I do good, I create businesses, right? Uh, this is what I do. I, I don't have any official like education, but I know how to build business. That's this is, and I know people, I know him. When he's talking about, I'm a good person. He saying like right back at him, all of the things said, this is what I really admire about him. But one of the values I bring, and I think is very important that kindness, be kind to people, be, and try to find people that can grow businesses. Business creates, everybody wants to be useful. And if you find people that can create jobs and make it, I cannot change the world, but I can change around me. Start step by step, building and giving and hoping that they understand and give, pass it on. But Chris, so, how, how, did you become, how did you become this way? Uh, interest in business and you have these values, loyalty and kindness. Was it your father, your mother, or something that happened in your oh, childhood? Oh, oh. How did you become this? I, it's, it's very interesting. I, I grew I grew up, uh, like I said, I was born in Iran. I grew up in a war between Iran and Iraq. So uh, until I was nine, I didn't even know I'm going to live or wake up the next day because of the bombs and everything. Wow. So I remember first night when I slept in Sweden, when I moved to Sweden, that tomorrow I'm waking up. So I'm very appreciative of my life. I, I am grateful for the small things. I am not, but one of the things Marcus knows I cannot be bought. You cannot buy me with any money in the world. There is no, because my values is so strong to do the right thing and be kind. So uh, this is the, I don't know. I have, I have had, of course, like everybody, I have challenges in my life. So I, I don't see if something happens in business, money lost or whatever, I don't get affected by that because I created that money. I will make it again. I don't go home and feel sad about it. It is what it is. This happens. And I have that mindset and I'm trying to teach people around me, see the value. Every morning we wake up and we can walk and brush our teeth and see and hear. It's very difficult to forget about it. So if you do that, I think uh, life is very easy. You would be, if you are happy with less, then you will be appreciative of everything is coming. Wow. Big, some big people, lesson. Inspiring. Yeah. Big and lesson. More, yeah. Some people say like, yeah, uh, it's easy to say uh, this kind of things when you have money. You are happy because you have money. I say no. I, I I was happy first. Then it came. I put my happiness before money. I'm not rich because I'm happy. I'm happy and uh, I became rich. So this is the now I'm saying like for me richness is. I do whatever I want. I wake up. I'm healthy. This is richness. Everything is not about. So this is a little bit. Uh, I'm not want to go too deep, but you know, Marcus. No, that's why he's asked me. I talk about these things with people around me. I think it's very important. That's uh, you know, big lesson to learn from you, Chris. And that that's exactly what I wanted uh, our audience and people to know from you, because it's way way more beyond businesses. You know, business is important, but people are more important. You know, and we yeah. can change the world by yeah. believing in people. And that's yeah. exactly what I wanted you to say. Uh, another thing that I, if, if we don't do that, you know, I have one one big fan in Torre Vieja that will kill us. So I want you yeah, to yeah, talk yeah. about my son. <laughs> Exactly. I want you to talk about Nico because Nico and I are becoming good friends now. His son, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. is is becoming the next superstar in Padel. So I was yeah. texting I was texting him yesterday or two days ago saying, hey, Nico, bro, uh, because he's speaking to me, you know, like like Chris, you know, like, hey, Marcos, how are you doing? How's life? Yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. So he's amazing. His son is incredible. I mean, he's how, how old? How old is your son? Chris? 14. He's 14 and it just... Like today, I talk, send a message to Marcus, actually. He comes, he sits in the car, said, yeah, I I didn't know. Like they said, that, I, I talked to Marcus, said, what? Yeah, dad, I love him. Oh, really? Wow. I said, he's a, 
he, I, I just love him that. I say, yeah, I love him too. He's an amazing person. This is I why know. Marcos never answers my phone calls. He's on the phone yeah. with your 14 year old son all the yeah. time. I love uh, it. Sorry. How good is Nico like, though, Marcos? Is he going to turn professional one day? No, listen, listen. This is the funny story because yeah, every time that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I'm, I'm meeting him and telling him like, hey, bro, you gotta, you gotta work hard. You know, I'm gonna help you out to become the next superstar in Padel. You know, his answer all the time, like, Marcos, I'm already the best. You know, you don't need to help me. I'm already the best. And I said, no, no, listen, I'm trying to teach him, you know, kind of the pathway, you know, to become humble or whatever. But he's so freaking confident. He's so freaking confident. He's always telling me like, yeah, yeah, Marcos, yeah, I love you, but I'm I'm already the best. And yeah. I said, like, I don't know how to work him out, you know, but I love that feeling too. And and he's so kind as well. I mean, Gina, but how good is he, Marcos? Like, yeah, yeah, we're no, not getting we're not getting it real. Yeah, let, let's busy. say that he has room to improve. Let me let me yeah. say that politely. That's, that's that very put, well put. He has yeah. room to improve. Yeah. <laughs> don't so, tell him, don't tell him this because I love it and I will keep yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. it. You know? Let's so speaking of excellence, um, it's a good segue to Chris. So how how in the how in the hell do you plan on playing against the Miami PC. How are you, I mean, I wanted to go in from excellence. We're talking Miami. Now we talk LA. How are you going to compete against us, buddy? What's the plan? <laughs> we will. He's speechless. And who yeah, are your no, players? No, 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 who, who's who's, who's your best it. player? Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. I mean, you have, Miami Beach. you have a, you have a, you have some big signings that you, you had a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so, talk a little talk about bit about Seba. Today, actually, I was with Seba today. I was in World Padre Tour in Alicante. Uh, I have, we, have, we signed Seba Nerona. He's a legend in Padel. has been number one for many years, number two for nine, ten years. Uh, he's, uh, he's like by recognized by Adidas as a legend of the sport. He got his own racket. Uh, He's an amazing, amazing human being. I, I always will tell you, the first thing for me is a human being. There, then comes the profession. Or go, he's an amazing human being. We signed the, the Daniela Banchero, Dani Banchero from Argentina, uh, which is number former number one in Argentina, play World Padre Tour. Uh, and we have, in my mind, number one now, uh, Luis Estrada. Estrada. And young, yeah. And we have uh, Jordana. And you have to know that I have good players behind that we are training and coming. So I'm not too worried. Uh, and the most important thing is I'm telling everybody we have to win, but we need to show. We, this is a show business. We need yeah. to make it as fun as possible to people to understand why we love this sport. We need to be able to show that to the audience so they hey. get the love that we have. Chris, you also 100% uh, agree on that. You know, we we all got to we gotta make an effort, you know, to educate, you know, with these 120 million households that will be exposing the sport of Padel, we got to make an effort for people to understand the sport and mm -hmm. to get engaged with that. But uh, please also mention, you know, you have a super celebrity as well, good friend of mine too, uh, that is your coach, Diego yeah. Salazar, and, yeah. and he's the coach of LA, uh, LA Bid, right? Yes, he's the coach. Uh, amazing human being, very good, amazing what he does. Another player I have, it's uh, I have Alex Ruiz, num currently number 10 in the world, uh, as an investor with me beside the hockey players, so you know. Uh, and we have uh, Javi Rico, also I think number 18 in the world. So we have a couple of players. We are trying to get some uh, top players and women today. I cannot mention names, but today I was at a meeting for the future, for the because I think uh, I, I really think that uh, in the board of PPL we need to keep the American. We don't. We shouldn't take so much foreigners in. So we make the North American players go. But it's good to bring them because the uh, hires the level with them because we need to, of course to make it beautiful and fun, which it is. Uh, we need to bring this uh, both women and men. So this is what I'm working on for the future. Chris, which team do you think is going to be your biggest competition? This year, uh, I, I think it's between uh, San Diego because I think they have the broadest, uh, broadest team. Uh, they have uh, good. I, I, I think we have very good uh, one, two. Uh, I, I'm working on number three, but they have the broadest team and Miami. Miami, absolutely. Uh, men, I, I think we have a very good team in men. 
uh, women, uh, I think Miami is, but this is a, uh, the reason everybody know who they have, who they sign. She's an amazing player. All of them are good. All of them yeah. are good in all the teams, you know, Miami, Toronto, Vegas, yeah. Arkansas, you know, Cancun. Are, the best. are you coming out every weekend to root Diego. for the team? <laughs> Yeah, I will be there. I'm going to be there. For, I'm coming on the 10th. Uh, I'm going back on 23 to Spain. I'm missing one weekend. I'm coming. So I'm going to be uh, five weeks uh, of... Uh, so if we go... When we go to a championship, when we're going to win it, so I'm going to be there to take the cup. That's Are fine. you bringing Nico? Uh, You're, who's coming have with you? Cars and everything ready for that. You got to bring Nico and Gina, please, with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Who's, but who's coming next weekend? For opening weekend, who are you bringing? Everybody. Uh, all, all like from our team. Yeah. 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 Uh, Alan is coming. Marcus Alan? is coming. Our, like 11 players are coming. Diego is coming. And we have a couple of, we have a young, one of our partners, Magnus Uttuson. He has a son. He's maybe, uh, maybe top three in Sweden. Adam Uttuson, really good player. So we are bringing him. He's a 16 year old. But future really good players. So, Chris, the great, I think a really good question is like when we're going through the podcast, we have all these guests on from different teams, and it's interesting to talk about roster size. And I, I, I like you just mentioned you have you said eleven players coming on the first weekend. That's I guess you can only play four. on that first weekend the four players. So it, it, that's is that for experience for them? Is that for them to be able to see what this event is to train with everybody? Like walk me through the the, the concept because Miami's also bringing the entire roster even if they're not playing. Uh, for, for for us, it's about we want to build the like build the team. So all of them that are coming, we don't want anybody exclude anybody the first week. So we want them to come have the feel. It's a we are a family. We are a team. We already met them, uh, and this is we are building for the future. You know, it's four players, but maybe somebody for the next year, somebody get injured. We are building for the future. So mm -hmm. I think it's important that I bring all of the team for the first. So Marcos, they, I, I want to mention something. You know, I think that the fact that all the teams are bringing everybody, you know, at least for the inaugural weekend is amazing because part of our legacy was building this kind of family, the PPL family, you know, and bringing everybody together and providing opportunities for everybody to succeed and to develop themselves and to get exposed and to participate. But uh, something that I would love to mention, you know, I, I got a bit of experience, you know, on, on managing, you know, national teams in world championship and other international competitions. And my speech was always with the players like, listen, everybody's playing. Some of you guys will be playing on the court and some of you guys will be playing outside. The court but everybody's playing so i don't like that idea of only the important guys are the ones that are you know uh you know playing on the court because these guys need a lot of support these guys need love the guys you know need that environment and everybody has an, a very important piece whether they are hitting the ball in front of the cameras and everybody or not so mm -hmm. i would make sure that everybody understand that everybody's playing that weekend some of them will be playing on the court and some others will be playing from outside which in my mind is more or less the same, you know, like yeah. a team is a team and the strength of the team is, mm -hmm. is that, you know, that strength is coming from the unity. Um, Chris, I I, 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 pardon me? I couldn't say it better myself. It was, it was very well said. Marcos, you just, you impress us always. Yeah. Always. Hey, hey, Dave, Davis, I know you want to wrap up soon, but before we do, Marcos should talk a bit about the court that we're using. At Tampa yeah, yeah. next weekend. I was that was my next question. Good job, Keith. Well, it's maybe not Marcos, you know, because it's Chris again. You know, he provided us, you know, an sponsorship with his companies and everything. He's the one that is putting together this kind of uh, opportunities for us. So please go ahead, uh, Chris, and explain. You know what what you are doing for us. But Marcos, let me just jump in and say he's doing it at his sole expense, and it's a it's a big expense. So this is how dedicated Chris is to the PPL. He keeps on. He's the gift that keeps on giving. I love that. Um, He's doing way, way beyond, you know, that he was supposed to do, to be honest with you. So we got an agreement with his company, you know, for partnering and becoming the official court of the of the um, PPL and so on. But he's doing the extra mile, the, the 100 extra miles, I would say, you know, for us. So once again, I, I don't think we have words enough to say thank you for everything that you are doing, man. 
and is way more beyond that business. He, uh, Chris is very interested in Padel to succeed in the US and the PPL to become, you know, a very successful ecosystem for everybody. And obviously we, we have many proofs that, you know, he's doing that, you know, for, for all of us, you know, to benefit of that. Right. So, so Chris, I think, I think it's only fitting for us to end with probably the most important question. Um, all 13 million viewers of this, of this podcast want to know the answer to this. You guys are called the LA beat. Yeah. That's an incredible name. It's in the top three names that, yeah. Well, well Marcos is doing like beat of a heart and there's a lot of ways yeah. we could take that. Uh, you, you got it. What's your theme song? What song are is, is it's our weekend? Theme? It's weekend song. Oh, which one? I'm gonna uh, listen. I'm so Sing bad it. with artists, uh, but I know it's weekend. I uh, four weeks ago I didn't know who that guy was. To be honest, I'm very. I don't watch TV. I I just business my mind. So, but I know that we He's have from one. Toronto. He's from Toronto, Chris. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody's everybody's Everyone's from Toronto. From Toronto. <laughs> But the name LA Beat actually Alan Flat uh, to give him uh, to him he came up with that name and which I directed we had a couple of them but I really love that name it's incredible uh, you I always say it's... on your social media can you feel the beat can you feel the beat, you feel the beat? I'm, yeah. I'm always feeling the beat bro I'm yeah, always yeah, feeling yeah. The beat. drop the, drop the beat oh. yeah there's lots of things yeah. you can do that Davis there's a there's a rumor that the Toronto Polar Bears are going to use the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald as their walk-on song. Yeah, yeah. Let's go watch it's not the a rumor. Only the Let's Canadians will appreciate that reference right it. now. I love We're it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, Chris, Chris, Marcos, Keith, and our producer Mike. Mike, you didn't talk a lot this this podcast. People are gonna miss that. Well, you knew I was going to ask about the origin of the uh, nickname L.A. Beat because I'm always like I'm excited to see the action on the court. That's coming yes. soon. But I'm always interested in the origin of the nickname and the logo. Any insight into that logo? It's very retro style. I dig it. Yeah, uh, we have actually a marketing team that helps us with that. And they uh, take uh, we just go, gave them a little bit what we want. The simplicity is my always whatever I do. I want it simple. Uh, and I think we captured that, uh, and the name, and they did an amazing job. We sent a little front and back, but yeah, but it's a, uh, I cannot take, take that. It's a uh, very, uh, just, I'm, when I'm putting out, say, I want it to be simple, clean, not too much happening. This is the, and the beat. You did great. Last it's question, a last question a... I've got to ask, oh, go ahead. I need to know myself. I don't know, Chris, did you, you could have selected any city in North America for your franchise, because you were the first guy. Yeah. Did you select Los Angeles because it's one of the biggest TV markets in North America for sports teams, or because you you live there, you're going to live there, or because the sport's okay. going to explode there more than other cities? Why Los Angeles? Okay. Uh, you heard it here first, right? Oh. In three to five years, they will do documentary, they will do a movie. Which team do you think they're going to choose then? Miami, <laughs> L.A., Los Angeles, oh, oh. L.A. Beat. That's my shortest and cleanest answer. The I beat know. Goes on. The beat, yeah, goes, the beat on. goes on. That that was the. My, as soon as I heard, I said, "I'm thinking five years ahead." This is why I did it. Love you know, that. I haven't. Here's another Canadian reference. Um, I I was talking to Ben Mulroney. You guys don't know the Americans won't know who he is, but uh, Canadians do. So Ben. Uh, is very involved in TV, great guy, very talented. And I haven't even talked to Marcos about this, but he's interested in doing a documentary right now on the PPL. And he says, we better document it before we lose valuable content. So there will be, you're right, there will be a documentary. It might not be five years, it might be five weeks from now. Yeah, <laughs> no. hopefully. Yeah, but it will come, I know, because if I'm going to finish with something, is that I believe PPL and the, our, all of our teams, guys, will be the biggest platform for Padel in the world. And it will help everybody else because the, the TV, the audience, the fan base, it's in North America. It's done in a different way. With all due respect to the other ones, if you see the audience, I'm in Spain today. They have done the same thing for 20 years. It's not working, guys. It's people are not coming. You need to change. But in US and the can, you know what you are doing. This is this is like in the in the in your DNA. 
how to make a sport be attractive. One of the things that I want, I want people to scream at the games. And this is one thing that I will change in the future. I would push for that. So when you are playing at home, your audience can cheer you on. When you're away, this is the, we need to change a couple of things, make like just shake it a little bit to make this. But I believe we're gonna is, we're gonna have continuous gonna coaching. That. So, so gonna Deus get will be pleased about continuous coaching. Yeah. Deus, our coaches are gonna be involved, engaged. Yeah. It's not gonna be yeah. like boring tennis or anything. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you can't. We we I mean if there's one thing we know through sports in America that have worked and not worked is you go to an NBA game, there's a lot more going on than basketball. Exactly. Right? So exactly. so you you know, the sports that do it well, you can't just rely on culture and history. It has to be, you have to keep moving the sport forward. Always, yeah. always. The value, the value. On it. You know, well, Dave, guys, Mark, Mark, Marcos is going to have, he's not going to tell us now, but your listeners should be staying tuned for next week. And pretty soon, Marcos might be having some very, very exciting announcements about oh, incredible, boy. very famous people who yeah. are part of the PPL. So me too, guys. He'll me kill too. me if I say anything more, but Marcos, when do you think you'll be able to share news with our audience? Well, the best way to do that is creating some hype and say, hey, follow us, you know, on the next episode of the uh, PPL podcast. Which will be in Tampa and a beautiful, we got a beautiful setup in Tampa for the next podcast. Very excited about that. We can interview players. We got a special guest on next week, which I won't announce just now, but we have a very special guest. So it's going to be incredible. Um, Chris, it was really, really nice meeting you. Uh, via a video but it's i'll see you in next week for sure for sure uh, good luck to you and all and everything to do with the company and the la beat uh marcos keith you guys are my favorite guys almost my favorite guy in toronto uh mike you're the best uh we have to end this the right way i mean marcos you know what's coming, but I'm going to throw you a little bit of loop Let, let's, marcos, do it, let's do it together Let, let's do, let's it, do all it together, together. I know. Hey guys, one two three Vamos! Vamos!